been about everything. Um, I just sold a piece of furniture. Uh, it was a little coffee table I made. And um, it was out of a book, a do-it-yourself book. Um, I found the design really nice and simple. Um, simple in the fact that all you need is a board material. You don't need a special turning lathe or anything like that. Um, and there's another project in that book that I'm going to create. It's, um, it's a table that you can um, put either behind a, a, a sofa, sort of like a coffee table, but it's not really a coffee table. This is what I'm going to build. Um, the book calls it a console, console table. Okay. The person who actually had the idea for this table um, had to put a flat screen flat screen TV uh, you had to put it up on something you can mount it flat screens can be mounted up against the wall like a portrait or they can be on a piece of furniture next I'm going to make these pieces out of cardboard so I can draw out these curvatures and use them as templates. Well, I'm all for precision, but the guy who made the plans went with a quarter of an inch. So hence the tedious work of a quarter of an inch everywhere. <laughs> this is going to be the uh, top cross member council table. Okay, um, this is going to be my top piece that will stop the sway from left to right. And it's also notched at three places for um, the top support, which is over here. I need three of those. Okay, one, two, three. This is my leg. I need four legs. And these notches right here are to accommodate the um, leg block. I need four of them. I'm going to cut these patterns out. And then I am going to start cutting up my rough lumber. Yeah, um... I have some uh, some leftover oak that I'm going to use. Um, I don't know if it's going to clean up or not. I'm going to run it through the planer to see what it looks like. And stained, once it's stained, some of the, you don't see the same defects as you would if it's not stained. So not to waste wood. Live edge. So I'm going to run that. Hook up the
I may or may not use this. I don't know. There's a knot here that I don't think I'll be able to go around it. The same here, these two knots. This piece is too thin here. And this is cupped in the middle. They're probably going to end up using for something else. And this knot here is not, uh, not, not. <laughs> now that, that's probably, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to find some other bows. matching the uh, the hue or the color because it's all going to be red anyways so I got my four legs my two tops uh, the cover is going to be 42 long by 17 and a half wide and basically I'm skimming through what I have left and I'm picking the best out of it. Well, I got my pieces um, for the countertop or the console tabletop. And um, this one's gluing right now. This is what I'm using. Whichever one. I'm going to drain those out. Um, I can't glue the whole thing at once. I got to glue two sections at a time then glue it again in the middle because this planer does only 13 wide. And the countertop or council top is actually uh, 16, 17 something. It's supposed to be 17 and a half, but I think I took off some, some knots or took some knots out and it made it a little bit narrower, but it doesn't matter. Oh, another thing. Um, if you're, you're making... Uh, like this is a tabletop and there's no molding at the end. Okay. If your wood has to be all the same color or no white in it or um, 
you you can't have any you can't bury any defects in this you have to have wood that's good both sides to get your edge on either end now if it was something in the middle it wouldn't show up but in this case it does because you, you got both ends so you got to make sure both ends are, are clean and clear which one's the base of the leg, which side's the base and which side's the top. Okay, so the top, top is not as important, but it should, it should still be squared. tell the planer didn't, didn't uh, remove enough material but I was limited on what I could remove so these things are supposed to be 26 and a half okay I'm looking at this and this hasn't planed out, neither has this edge, but this edge is worse. So since my part permits me to cut out some of that, <clears throat> I'm sort of um,
found some birch, but there's stains in it. And there's sort of discoloration as well. And that I bet you comes from if you leave sawdust on something, it stains. If you want it to dry properly, never let it dry with sawdust on it. If you just sawed that lumber, make sure you dust it off before. I don't know how deep those stains go. I needed one inch and this was barely one inch. Gotta find another piece. Oh, I make these piece again. I gotta glue both sections back together. Okay, so this is glued. I can send this through the planer. And the same thing as the other one, the other section. I guess it's no use using extra force even though the clamp can dish it out.
For some reason, I'm getting this small edge or this small uh, bow. And glue can't stick in a bow. So I'm going to shorten these a little bit closer to finished dimensions. That way, maybe I can get rid of some of that. Joiner isn't quite long enough. Well, I'm surprised. Uh, this little plane, which uh, is a 40 or 50 year old shingle plane, actually managed to get these a little bit tighter together to create a better glue joint. Quite happy with that. This, this is me fitting the cable top supports on the top support and the legs go on either side. Okay. Um, pretty good fit. I'll try to remove one so I can show you what's going on.
know what I mean? And these are multiple saw cuts. Okay. Yeah, I've just finished these separators. They were made out of bra uh, birch. And um, I was going to say brass. <laughs> and they go here. They should go here. Yeah, they do. I got to clean them off a bit. A little fuzz from the saw. Okay, so what you see here. What you see here is my pocket jig rig. Okay. And these bits, you can buy them. They come from a I got sizes, doesn't say there, half inch to one eight, okay, and I got a little collet here stop, and what I'm aiming for is I want the thread to go into my other piece that I'm screwing into and it won't go through it see it won't go through it so I want those threads to go into the other piece so I want that depth so to get that This is a 3/8, 3/8ths one. I got that from measuring the uh, diameter of the screw head, and then I just set the depth to my mark that I made here. Okay, and I'm gonna make those pocket holes. I've got a multi multitude of holes here. Okay. From zero to two inch or zero to two and a half inch. That's how I made it. You can choose the spacing you want on this. That is pre-assembly and that's one of the legs. These are the two blocks. And now I'm gonna check to see if it's quartered. And it is. Uh, this isn't really Precision, precision work. But I have to hit it at a certain angle. So recap, this was on here, this was like this, drill bit broke, snap that off, cut this portion off, peel a little bit of lumber, and then pull it out at the same angle as the bit went in.
Well, I'm pretty happy with that. It turned out okay. Now I'm going to do it to the other side. Okay, so what I've done is mark this with the uh, supports in both pieces. I've marked where they go and I marked it on the inside and I put a block so that I know that that I'm square okay so now now's the time for sanding and um, I'm using an orbital sander okay it's got a velcro pad okay and I'm using for first pass I'm using this stuff it's Diablo 150 okay um, when you're, you're you're sanding you should start like 80 120 180 then maybe 220 some even go up to 320 for final passes and cars actually go up to oh you can get sandpaper up to 1500 right that's really fine um, my final pass is going to be uh, 220 extra fine and the thing is with the gloss it really shows up okay
Thank you.